you know the other thing um right at the beginning that Iana started with was assigning everyone a card um that had a word to explain their role in the entire family dynamic and i thought that was very interesting that was very important because in every family dynamic it's a story and there's this plot that gets started from the head to the rest of the other generations and the rest of the posterity and uh and you come into a family and you get assigned a role and it's either you play that role and when you don't play that role you get kicked out of the family or you get kicked out of the family dynamic uh, and the family drama and i i thought that was very interesting that you know there was this assigning of role to each and every one who came to for this uh, episode and so that they could see that they they walked it they came into the family dynamic and they play a role and then it brings me to the question of assessing does the role that i play within my family dynamic is it constructive is it a helpful role or is it a dysfunctional and a toxic role and i think that's important to ask yourself with these roles uh, that are assigned or these family roles is, is is it a is it a, a role that you're comfortable with and is it a role that is a helpful role is it a role that is a useful role or is it what that is is it a role that is toxic is it a role that is dysfunctional is it a role that enables is it a role that um tolerates things that should not be tolerated and hides things that should be revealed and looks away when you should and, and keeps quiet when you should look and speak up what role are you playing and assessing the uh, design of each role that is assigned in the family dynamic and questioning if that's a role that you actually want to play another important thing that came up in the story is how much of this bleeding all over everyone that Yolanda is doing because of her own trauma and her un and and never having resolved trauma with the respect for, for people that she needed to resolve with so she's uh, projecting her res she's resolving by projecting her trauma onto people who had nothing to do with causing her the trauma her family her children and <clears throat> so what was interesting is how she doesn't remember the things that she does the toxic things that she does when she's being a bully when she's being under overbearing undermining when she's being forceful when she's being not a pleasant person to be around she doesn't remember the things that she does to to when she's being that person but she remembers everything that everybody's done which is very interesting it's like people have this um particularly parents have this kind of rose colored tinted uh, lens through which they see themselves through when they're not willing to uh, admit their faults, admit their missteps, admit their wrongs. They see everybody else's um, stuff, but they literally forget, they overlook, they don't even have a blind spot to what they do. They like, it's almost like they, they didn't do the toxicity. It's almost like they didn't do the harmful and the hurtful things, say the harmful and the hurtful things that they said and did. And it's quite interesting. And again, I go back to, you know, this is about awareness of also oneself and your stuff. And in wanting people to take accountability and own their part in a dynamic that has become toxic, Think about what you have contributed. Um, and it could be so little, but take ownership of it own, and own it and, 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 and confess to it and ask for forgiveness for it. And, and then after that, no one can then hold you to it. But if you, if you don't even remember, but you remember everybody else's part, but you don't realize that every time each and every one of these people that were involved in this story outside of Yolanda, everything that they had to say was, and then Yolanda said this, and then did this, <laughs> you know, all of it was connected to being in dialogue with Yolanda, but she, re she doesn't even remember the things she says or does in some of the instances, but she remembers everybody's stuff and what they did and what they need to own up to, which is quite interesting. So I think that happens as well in, with, you know, people that we are in, disconnection with and are not in communication with as a result of some kind of grievances that they 
they remember what you did. They remember circumstances around what happened, but they don't remember the affronting, toxic, um, rude uh, thing that they did that caused a drift between you and them. Um, and I don't know what that is, but it's very important to call people to take accountability to, but what did you do? And what brought on this circumstance of there is now this breakdown and there's this drift and this distance between me and yourself. And that's part of calling people to own up to their stuff, you know? Um, I love what Iana said, she said, you know, the way that to Yolanda, in a, in a sit down with Yolanda and Justin said, with Justin, Justin does not trust you because when you come at him, you tell him that you don't honor him as a man, you don't respect him as a man because he was hanging around with his sister's abuser as a way for, in his view, as a way of keeping his sister close to him and not losing his sister again for another year, as a way of keeping an eye on this man so that should abuse happen, he steps up in the moment. And it's not hearsay that he's, he's moving from, but he's moving from, I saw it with my own eyes and I stepped up to defend my sister. Um, so Yolanda says, I don't have respect for you because you chose to hang out with this man, this abusive man, as a man. I don't have respect for you because I don't hang out with people that hang out with abusive men. The hypocrisy of it all because you hang out with you hang out with your abusive man for 15 years and abandoned your children and went all the way to New York and left them in the south. Anyway, but we're not talking about that. And and Yala really just has a harsh talk with Yolanda and says, "Look, your sons are very much connected to their mother and their mothers everything that the mother says to the to the son that is disparaging of his character of his manhood really does chip away at him which is why in the black culture um, you know at a certain age the men come in and they take over in the raising of the son because they know that that connection and that bond between a son and the mother is is a is an there's no other like it so much that if the mother is not mature and is not balanced she will use that bond to manipulate their son and and speak in his in in you know in her son's ear like this all the time and manipulate and control their son not willing to let go of that control that's why the men need to take um, the sons away at a certain point would do that in the black culture but Yana says but that's not being done anymore in the black culture because you know people are just doing whatever they're doing now and they've forsaken their culture and the ways of their culture and so you have all these women saying whatever they want to these young men and breaking them um, and then these and no wonder these men are growing up to be broke to be broken husbands and growing up to make children but not be the greatest not be the most available of fathers or not even be the most great of husbands you know because they've been broken down by this feminine energy and they've not from a certain point going into their teens going towards manhood been moved from the the feminine influence and then brought into a masculine and a mature um well-informed and ethical masculine influence and been poured into in how to be a man and stand as a man and being honorable as a man and be of in authentic position as a man and it, yolanda just just doesn't get it she 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 just she doesn't get it she i she really doesn't get it um <laughs> because she really just continues to dishonor her son's heart um you know and there's a part there in the story about yolanda being a bit of a gold digger that even in at nancy's deathbed because nancy used to spoil her financially to get her to obey and 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 kind of rein her in Yes, Nancy would speak her mind, but also slip her some money to get her to obey. So manipulation, that's something that she learned from Nancy. And so she does it as well with her children by, well, if you don't do what I say, then we have no contact. You don't have 
access to me and children want their parent and you know it's a form of manipulation that you would say to your children when you if you don't do things the way that i see that you should do them then you don't have access to me it's a way to get your children to um, conform to what you how you want them to do things and when you want them to do things according to please your sensibilities and not be inconvenienced by them having a different view than you do you know uh, which is again a lot of parents do that you know these are my rules this is my house sure to uh, but it, there's an extent where you just don't want to be inconvenienced and uh, because there's always plenty of room to have conversations that are open um that break things down so that everybody understands very clearly where the the thing that is being implemented is coming from you know and the thing that is being asked of is coming from so that a child has a greater kind of respect for oh i understand why your stand is that you know um which is why it's so important to know not know them but it's important for parents to share those stories because it's not the child's um duty to say so what's your story I think it's important for a parent to realize that in order for my child to understand where I'm coming from, I need to tell them my story because you're the adult, you're the parent. Overall, I think, you know, this was a very emotional um, episode for me. This is a very emotional episode for me. Um, but I, what I took away from it is, is that, you know, instead of disengaging with what you cannot accommodate and what makes you uncomfortable let's say in your standing what's important is to create awareness with boundaries and communicating your boundaries and saying look here is my boundary about this and I you know or create awareness with uh, when you do this I experience you in this way and it hurts me in this way and so when you do that uh, you, I will probably create distance between me and yourself. If you don't, you know, if you don't relent, then I, I'm, for the sake of my heart, for the sake of my spirit, for the sake of my wellness, I'm going to have to create distance between me and you. Because when you do this, I experience it as something that really hurts my heart, hurts my spirit, hurts my soul. And I cannot allow you to continue to treat me that way. So create awareness in creating boundaries about how you get treated or create awareness in creating boundaries about your st regarding your stand and how you would like to be related to. I think that's the major thing that I really, really got from this, from this episode, which then, you know, creates bridges to people. Um, not everything has to come to an end because there's this contention of there's disagreement between us, but stating your position and creating a boundary. And if that boundary can be honored, if that boundary can be accepted, then a relationship around that boundary or taking into consideration that boundary can continue. But then if obviously you're dealing with someone who's saying, I, I cannot honor your boundary and I cannot take into consideration your boundary then you, there is a communication about the distancing as well or the repositioning as well and it's not just oh okay you crossed my boundaries but I didn't communicate my boundaries with you and I didn't communicate that you were crossing my boundaries but the suddenly I just created distance that's what I really took from this that create awareness Create awareness in telling the truth. Create awareness in setting boundaries. Create awareness in your own stand, in, in articulating your own stand as well. This was a very, I don't know, there was something, uh, this, this episode had me weeping. Um, there was just really something that really touched me. I, I think it's a compounding of all of the episodes. This particular season, they really, really touched a nerve in my spirit and tell me what your thoughts have been about this particular season this has been a particularly excellent season and the illustration of the patterns the negative patterns has been so clear this season compared to the other seasons for me and 
um, maybe I'm stepping into some kind of awakening and a certain kind of awareness, perhaps. Um, maybe it's always been like this, you know. But tell me what your thoughts are about this episode and this overall season up until now. I don't think this is the finale finale. I think this is the half time break and then it's holiday break time and then she comes back maybe with some reflections or some thoughts or looking over the years um, after the, you know, Christmas break and then the season ends the, and then the show ends. Yala, Fix My Life ends. Um, and I have some thoughts about why I think this show is ending as well. I think uh, what about why Yanla is stepping away. But I will tell you that in another video. So uh, if I remember, hopefully I remember. But I've been thinking about it a lot, so I'll probably remember. Anyway, I'll see you again next time. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you for stopping by. Thank you so much for helping build this um a channel with your views and your commentary and just the back and forth in the channel in the comments section um please do check out the check out the description box as well i have some information there i have a um a list of all of the my reviews of iana fix this iana fix my life season there from um episode one to this episode all of the previews uh and all of the actual episodes so check that out as well um, as a quick link and just read through there to see other information about how to get in touch with me and where else to follow me on um, IG as well as on Facebook um, I'm not on Twitter uh, so what else do I want to say what else do I want to say I think that's about it thank you so much for tuning in like I said I am in constant appreciation of you and gratitude for you I thank you very much I hope um, God asked me to uh, review another show that's coming on soon. Um, I, I did this particular season of this particular show because God asked me to. If you didn't catch that at some point, if I didn't say it yet, because God asked me to. So I, I'm just going with the flow of God. This is not necessarily a, a reviews channel. It's a magazine channel, so it covers a variety of different subjects. Um, so I, I, and I just go with the leading of the Holy Spirit. And this is what I was led to do in this particular season, at this particular time. And so I hope um, a review of another show comes up. Um, but I will see you again next time. Thank you for tuning in and yeah, bye. <laughs>